If President Biden gets his way, an African-American woman will be sitting on the U.S. Supreme Court by the end of the summer. He pledged to make such a pick while campaigning for the White House, and last week he made it official with the formal nomination of Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson. One person who thought all along that Jackson would be the choice to replace Justice Breyer is McGeorge School of Law Professor Leslie Jacobs. Good morning to you. Leslie, can you hear us? Yes. There I'm here. Go. There you go. So you were right. Not surprised at all, are you? Well, well, I'm not. I have to say we also spoke about uh, Justice Leandra Kruger, and mm -hmm. I thought she was an excellent choice as well. But it's not a surprise that just uh, Judge Jackson has been chosen. She's been confirmed by the Senate before three times. And so that will make it easier going forward. While accepting the nomination last week, Jackson, who clerked for Justice Breyer, spoke very fondly of him, his integrity, his pragmatism, but saying also that though she, quote, may fill his seat, I will never fill his shoes. Some believe there have been surprising rulings out of the President Trump's recent picks for the high court. Those justices maybe not going along with his political preferences and decisions, in some people's opinion. As a district court judge, Judge Jackson has shown us that she believes in a limited view of presidential privilege. How so. Well, she uh, had a big case having to do with whether a certain uh, advisor of President Trump had to testify. And as a district court judge, again, she's interpreting the law here, but she says the law and the Constitution does not make presidents kings, and so they can't confer this absolute immunity on any of their advisors that they've talked to. Your assessment of this judge, if she should land on the Supreme Court, is that she would show concern for the impact of laws on real people and a belief that a judge's role should be to understand the experience of people in less privileged positions and protecting the less powerful from government overreach. What case or ruling shows us that, in your opinion? Well, there's one case that she wrote um, that had to do with, again, a, a President Trump's order um, where he was telling the Homeland Security Agency to speed up um, and expand these fast deportations of people trying to get into the country. And again, it was a very complex case having to do with uh, things in statutes and laws like that. But one thing that she did say in her opinion is she said an agency shouldn't be able to make a new policy without considering the impact of that policy on the people who will be impacted by it, the real life experience of those people. And so I think that we see that in her other opinions and we will probably see that carry through in her decision making on the Supreme Court. Okay, now you mentioned a little bit about this earlier for a time right after the retirement announcement of Justice Breyer, a Californian first became when that first became official. Some folks here started hoping that the Californian you mentioned Supreme Court Judge Leandra Cougar might get the nod from the president last week. Of course, we learned that she did not. You mentioned the confirmations that have already happened for Judge Jackson. Do you think that is the biggest reason why that she kind of ended up rising to the top because she presents less of a confirmation challenge? for the president? I think it was one factor, but certainly not the only factor. Uh, Judge Jackson has an extraordinary resume, really quite like Justice Kruger's resume, uh, going to excellent law schools. Both of them clerked for Supreme Court justices. Um, they had corporate law firm jobs. A difference would be that uh, 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 Kruger was in the government, representing the government, and what Jackson did was actually as a public defender. So she was representing people against the government. And again, the same type of level of job. And so I think it was one factor that went into choosing her. Again, uh, Justice Jack Judge Jackson had already been put by Biden on the most important Court of Appeals in the nation, the D.C. Circuit. And so that's often a signal that she is being strongly considered for a Supreme Court nomination. And so, again, that's why it's not surprising at all. Give that along with, of course, her qualifications. All righty. And we've talked about this when we've talked about other justices in the past. Is Jackson an evolutionist or have a living Constitution approach like Breyer? Or could we expect some different kind of surprises from her if confirmed? I think she'd be along the lines of uh, Breyer and the, the other justices who might be on the more left side of the spectrum that we talk about. Again, we have a spectrum that in the past number of years has 
you know, been moving uh, rightward. Another thing I want to note about uh, Judge Jackson is that she brings a working mother's perspective to the court. Uh, the only other working mother that we have at this point is um, Justice Barrett, uh, who may be expected to bring a certain realm of experiences of being a mother and working. And to have uh, Judge Jackson bring that as well is, I think, an important perspective to have on the court. All right, and I'm sure a lot of working moms are thinking that as well. Thank you so much for joining us to share your perspective this morning. Happy to be there. You too.